In the annals of military history, there are stories that stand out, tales of remarkable prowess and strategic brilliance. And in the heart of World War II, one division etched its name in history, the 7th Panzer Division, famously known as the Ghost Division. Known for their lightning-fast maneuvers and unparalleled efficiency, the Ghost Division earned its reputation on the unforgiving battlegrounds of Europe. From the Blitzkrieg in Poland to the decisive victories in France, all the way to the Eastern Front. Join us as we delve into the full history of the Ghost Division. After the successful invasion of Poland, the Oberkommando des Heeres, OKH, German High Command, recognized the limited effectiveness of the Light Divisions. Consequently, they issued orders to reorganize the four Light Divisions into complete Panzer Divisions. In October 1939, the 2nd Light Division underwent this transformation and emerged as the 7th Panzer Division, joining the ranks of Germany's 10 armored divisions. Comprising 218 tanks across three battalions, the division included two rifle regiments, a motorcycle battalion, an engineer battalion, and an anti-tank battalion. The recently promoted General Erwin Rommel, who had previously served on Hitler's staff during the invasion of Poland, secured command of the division with Hitler's intervention. Assuming control on February 10, 1940, Rommel swiftly directed his unit to engage in practice maneuvers essential for the upcoming campaign. On May 10, 1940, the invasion of France commenced. Within the first three days, the 7th Panzer Division, under Rommel's leadership, and three Panzer Divisions commanded by General Heinz Guderian, had advanced to the River Meuse. Upon arrival, they encountered the impediment of already destroyed bridges. Rommel took an active role in the forward positions, overseeing attempts to establish a crossing. Initial efforts were thwarted by suppressive fire from the French on the opposite side of the river. Despite these challenges, by May 16th, the division had successfully reached its designated objective at Avesnes sur Helpe. According to the original plan, they were to halt and await further orders. But Rommel, displaying his characteristic determination, disregarding the initial plan, the 7th Panzer Division chose to push forward and smash headfirst into the French resistance. On May the 20th, the division successfully arrived in Arras. General Hermann Hoth received directives to bypass the town, thereby isolating its British garrison. To execute this strategy, he directed the 5th Panzer Division to move westward, while the 7th Panzer Division maneuvered to the east, flanked by the SS Division Totenkopf. Here, the British forces would launch a brutal and surprising counterattack. This would surprise the German divisions, especially the 7th Panzer Division, deploying two infantry battalions supported by the formidable Matilda Mk1 and Matilda II tanks in the Battle of Arras. The 50th Division and the 1st Tank Brigade were advancing south from Arras. This marked the sole extensive offensive by the British forces during the campaign. Initially planned with two infantry divisions and around 15,000 soldiers, the attack was eventually carried out by only two infantry battalions, the 6th and 8th Battalions of Durham Light Infantry, supporting the 4th and 7th Royal Tank Regiment. This combined force totaled approximately 2,000 men and was reinforced by 74 tanks. The infantry battalions were organized into two columns for the assault. The right column made swift progress initially, capturing several German prisoners. However, their advance was soon impeded by the 7th Panzer Division and SS Totenkopf, supported by air cover, leading to significant casualties for the British forces. The left column then progressed. They also enjoyed early success before running into opposition from the infantry units of General Major Erwin Rommel's 7th Panzer Division. The defending forces, elements of the motorized SS regiment Totenkopf were overrun. Their standard 37 PK anti-tank guns proving ineffective against the heavily armored British Matilda tank. Rommel committed some of his armor to local counterattacks, only to find the guns of the Panzer II and Panzer 38T. Tanks could not penetrate the Matilda's armor, 
Desperate to prevent a British breakthrough, Rommel ordered the division's 88 Flak 18 anti-aircraft guns and 105 field guns be formed into a defensive line and fire anti-tank and HE rounds in a last-ditch effort to stop the Matildas. The British advance was halted with heavy losses. Then, with Luftwaffe support, Rommel launched a counter-attack, driving the British back. The attack was completely repulsed. On May 24th, Hitler issued a halt order sparking ongoing debates about his reasons. Some speculate that he may have overestimated the size of the British forces in the area, while others suggest he prioritized reserving the majority of the armor for the Paris offensive. The halt order remained in effect until May 26th. Despite the temporary pause, the 7th Panzer Division, under Rommel's command, resumed its advance and reached Lille by May 27th. Hoth had placed the 5th Panzer Division under Rommel's leadership for the assault. The siege of Lille persisted until May 31st, culminating in the surrender of the French garrison of 40,000 men. The evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force from Dunkirk was completed on June 4th, with over 338,000 Allied troops successfully transported across the Channel. However, due to the urgency of the evacuation, they had to leave behind all their heavy equipment and vehicles. Resuming its march on June 5th, the division pressed forward toward the River Seine with the goal of securing the bridges near Rouen. With remarkable speed, covering a distance of 100 kilometers in just two days, the division arrived at Rouen only to discover that the bridges had been rendered unusable. Undeterred, the unit altered its course northward, strategically blocking the westward route to Le Havre and impeding the Operation Cycle evacuations. This strategic move compelled over 10,000 personnel from the 51st Highland Division, French 9th Army Corps, and other supporting troops to surrender at saint valery en caux on June 12th. On June 17th, new orders directed the division to advance on Cherbourg Naval Base, where additional British evacuations were in progress as part of Operation Ariel. Displaying astonishing swiftness, the division covered a staggering 240 kilometers in a mere 24 hours. Following two days of intense shelling, the French garrison at Cherbourg surrendered on June 19th. The division's ability to consistently achieve high speed and surprise, to the extent that both the enemy and the German high command occasionally lost track of its whereabouts, is where the 7th Panzer Division earned it the moniker Gespenster Division, or Ghost Division. Following the signing of the armistice with the French on June 22nd, the division underwent a shift to reserve status. It was initially dispatched to the Somme, and later to Bordeaux, where it engaged in re-equipping and preparations for Unternehmen Seelove, commonly known as Operation Sea Lion, the ambitious plan for the invasion of Britain. Unfortunately for Germany, this envisioned invasion had to be abandoned, as acquiring the deemed essential air superiority proved unattainable. In February, the division found itself back in reserve, returning to Germany under the command of General Hans von Funk. Stationed near Bonn, the unit awaited further developments while plans were formulated for a potential invasion of the Soviet Union. Maintaining an air of deception and prioritizing security, the division remained in Bonn until June 8, 1941. It was then mobilized onto 64 trains and transported by rail to the eastern frontier. The division assembled in East Prussia, southeast of Lützen, in anticipation of Operation Barbarossa, the large-scale invasion of the Soviet Union. The 7th Panzer Division readied its engines and was now ready for the biggest mission to date. Operation Barbarossa was initiated on June 22, 1941, at 3.05. Surprisingly, resistance at the border was weaker than anticipated, allowing the advancing tanks of the 7th Panzer Division to swiftly cover 60 kilometers and reach the Neiman River at Olita, Alitis, by midday. The Soviet 5th Tank Division on the east bank at Alitis was caught off guard, enabling the 7th Panzer Division to seize two bridges and establish bridgeheads across the river. However, the Soviets quickly responded with intense counterattacks, bringing the German advance to a sudden stop. The 5th Tank Division possessed formidable firepower boasting 300 tanks, including 55 of the advanced T-34 and KV-1 types. Positioned strategically on the reverse slopes of hillsides, they inflicted the first combat losses on the Panzer forces. In the afternoon, 
reinforcements from the 20th Panzer Division's 21st Panzer Regiment joined the fray. Heavy battles were now underway, the first tank battles with the Soviets, allowing von Funk to repel Red Army tank attacks and maintain pressure on the East Bank. Despite these successes, von Funk opted to postpone further advancement until his supplies caught up with the rapidly moving forces of the 7th Panzer Division. Having suffered the loss of 80 tanks in its initial probing attacks on the bridgeheads, the 5th Tank Division withdrew to the northeast during the night. With the path now clear, the 7th Panzer Division pressed forward another 100 kilometers, reaching the outskirts of Vilnius. The city was captured the following day by its motorcycle battalion during heavy fighting in the city. After consolidating its position in and around Vilnius, the division handed control of the city to the 20th Motorized Division and resumed its eastward advance. Unlike previous campaigns where Red Army positions were often outflanked and isolated, Soviet defenders stubbornly continued to resist, causing delays and casualties for the German forces. Despite creating pockets of resistance, the Soviet command couldn't establish a linear defense, and crucial road and rail communications northeast of Minsk were severed on June 26, just four days into Operation Barbarossa. The next day, the division linked up with the 18th Panzer Division from Panzer Group II, trapping the majority of three Soviet armies, the 3rd, 10th, and 13th, in a vast pocket west of Minsk. In a rapid three-day maneuver, the division reached the town of Yartsevo, outflanking Soviet positions around Smolensk and putting pressure on the Soviet 20th Army with the threat of encirclement. Meanwhile, the 29th Motorized Division captured the city of Smolensk from the south. However, with significant elements tied down at Yelnya, the 2nd Panzer Group lacked the strength to reconnect with 7th Panzer positions, leaving a gap between the two groups. This gap allowed Soviet forces to move both ways through the corridor. On July 26th, together with the 20th Motorized Division, the division pushed southward another 20 kilometers. But the encirclement was not fully closed. In another week, pressure from all sides eliminated the pocket, and the division was finally relieved by infantry units. Subsequently, it was withdrawn from the front lines for refitting and rest. At the outset of the campaign, the division comprised 400 officers and 14,000 men. Fast forward six months to January 1942, and the toll on the division became starkly evident, 2055. Soldiers had lost their lives, 5,737, were wounded, 313 were missing, and an additional 1,089 were afflicted by frostbite and lousborn diseases, amounting to a total of 9,203 casualties. As the late winter set in, the division assumed defensive positions along a line stretching from Yuknov to Gzhatsk and Zubtsov. On March 15th, it engaged in combat during the battles of Rzhev, countering a series of Soviet offensives. By April 4th, the division had been relocated to Vyazma. Come May 1942, the division's strength dwindled to 8,589, with most personnel having joined after the commencement of the campaign. Consequently, the division was withdrawn to southern France for a period of rest and refit. Overall, the division performed very well during Operation Barbarossa, employing similar tactics to those used in France, surprising the enemy on many occasions. In mid-May, the division was transported to southern France for coastal protection duties. Despite being ready by September 1st, it temporarily used French tanks before receiving new equipment. Concerned about the Allied invasion, Hitler sent the division to Vichy, France on November 11th for Operation Lila, with the goal of seizing the Vichy French fleet at Toulon. Unfortunately, the operation failed as the French fleet was scuttled. The division remained in the Marseille-Avignon region until January 1943, when it returned to the Eastern Front due to the deteriorating German Front in the Southern Soviet Union. Upon joining Army Group South, the division played a crucial role in halting the Soviet attempt to encircle the 1st Panzer Army in the Caucasus. It successfully defended Rostov in very heavy fighting, ensuring an escape route for the 1st Panzer Army. The division remained active along the Don and Donuts river lines and participated in the 3rd Battle of Kharkov with other elite SS divisions. In the summer of 1943, it took part in the Kursk Offensive, sustaining heavy casualties. 
After the German offensive at Kursk, the division was transferred to the 48th Panzer Corps, and General Major Hasso von Mantufel assumed command on August 20th, 1943. Facing a massive Soviet attack on August 3rd, 1943, led by the 1st Tank Army and the 5th Guards. Tank Army, the division, attached to the 4th Panzer Army, retreated gradually against the Soviet 40th Army. Relieved at the front, it formed a shock group with the Gross Deutschland Division to counter the Soviet advance. Despite initial success, further Soviet reinforcements hindered the German counterattack. Army Group South ultimately withdrew to the Dnieper line. In August, everything was going wrong. Personnel losses were significant, leading to the disbandment of the replacement battalion. The division, with reduced combat value, withdrew to the Dnieper position, crossing the river at Kremenchug. It participated in the defensive battle of Kiev, the German counterattack at Jitomir, and subsequent heavy defensive battles during the Ukraine retreat, earning commendations for distinguished conduct. In July 1944, still on the retreat west, the division was moved northward to the Baltic states and the northern sector of Army Group Center in response to the Soviet Baltic Offensive. It engaged in defensive battles in Lithuania. Towards the end of the summer, the 1st Baltic Front sought to reach the Baltic Sea via the 3rd Panzer Army. On September 21st, the division relocated over 100 kilometer north to an area east of Mimel, where intense fighting took place. Following the Mimel Offensive, German forces were compelled to retreat to a defensive perimeter around the coastal town of Mamel. With the Mamel bridgehead cut off, the division was relieved by an infantry division. It was then loaded onto ships and transported by sea out of the pocket, leaving its heavy equipment behind with the remaining German forces. On November 7, 1944, the remaining division regrouped at the Arias training area in East Prussia, undergoing partial reorganization. At this location, it served as a reserve for the 2nd Army of Army Group Center. In January 1945, the Second Belarusian Front of the Soviet Union launched a significant offensive, penetrating the defenses of the 2nd Army. Consequently, the division was compelled to retreat in a northerly and westerly direction. The division's Kampfgruppe engaged in a strategic rearguard action in northern Poland, specifically around Elblong and to the east of Grudziądz. Crossing the Vistula, the division continued its defensive efforts in and around Chojnice. By mid-February 1945, the division found itself pushed back into northern Pomerania. Throughout March 1945, the division adopted a delaying strategy in the vicinity of Gdynia, situated north and west of Danzig. On April 19, 1945, the surviving troops were once again evacuated by sea, departing from the Hell Peninsula. A small surviving contingent of the division regrouped at the Baltic Sea island of Usedom in western Pomerania. They proceeded to retreat westward through Prussia, ultimately surrendering to the British Army at Schwerin, located north and west of Berlin, in May 1945. And that brings our video to a close. Thank you for joining me on this fascinating journey through the riveting history of the 7th Panzer Division, famously known as the Ghost Division. If you enjoyed uncovering the full story of this remarkable division that left an indelible mark on military history, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more engaging content. Feel free to share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. I'd love to hear your perspective. And remember to check out our links below, our Patreon, for more content. So stay tuned for more gripping historical narratives. And until next time, keep exploring the past and embracing the lessons it has to offer. See you in the next video.